to me are partisanship. The reality is that the security and prosperity partnership is the foundation and was intended as a foundation to bring three countries together, Mexico, the United States, and Canada. And that harmonization, as they like to call it, and I'm talking about the, uh, the elites of the United States military and that of the Canadians and, uh, and Mexico, our business elites, our political elites, uh, and, and frankly, they're represented again by both political parties, uh, are, are working to bring about uh, not only a, a customs union, uh, not only a, a common currency, but an actual uh, 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 consolidation of three nations into one. Well, that's what's so frustrating is that you are covering real information like if you were a weatherman and a thunderstorm blew through and the <laughs> and the water you know, measuring meters said an inch and a half of rain fell and you're sitting there with the rain gauge showing the rain. Everybody knows this is happening. And then they're moving forward, these elites with these programs, but then they have no respect for the general public and play this deceptive game of saying Lou Dobbs uh, is lying to you when we have this ruling political right. international class that, as you said, tries to rule by deception and doesn't want the people involved uh, in uh, governing yeah. through their representatives. Yeah, you use the word rule. I would use the word in, uh, attempt to influence. Uh, and, uh, you know, the effect in some instances may be the same, Alex, but uh, what we are truly watching is, a, is an effort uh, on the part of a, a group of elites worldwide uh, who wish to bring about uh, a, a one world order. Uh, it, it may not be particularly a new world order since it's, the effort has been underway for some time, uh, but, uh, but that is one of the tensions that uh, obviously work in our global society. And you look at this global order they're trying to establish. It's very undemocratic. It, it is against sovereignty. It is always openly anti-family. Anything that is independent, anything that they can't control, they, they want us dependent. That's what these elites want, these mega corporations that aren't free market. That's their goal. Uh, I want to read to you a headline, if we can put it back on screen. And, and I first saw this in the news in 2002, and when I would cover it, even in the Washington Post as a footnote, people couldn't believe it. But here is the Ottawa Citizen, one of the big papers in Canada, for those that don't know, February 22nd, 2008. This is three years ago. And, and there's new articles on this as well as part of the Continental Security Perimeter. And it says, Canada, U.S. agree to use each other's troops in civil emergencies. And if you read the Pentagon Agreement with Canada and Mexico, it says we will aid each other during civil unrest. So, and I've had generals on who are retired that say, yes, this has been in the works for a long time. Right. To use foreign troops in America and vice versa, I mean, it doesn't get any more crazy or new world order than that. Uh, and and it is, uh, again, for the very reason to stated, it is not a matter of public knowledge. It is not a part of the consciousness of American society uh, and the voting public. And this, this reflex that has grown up over the course of the last, particularly the last 30 years in this country, speaking only about America, uh, that, uh, that either political party, leaders, uh, elected leaders of this country, would in any way seek to deny a, a larger body of public knowledge uh, is, is to be contemptible. Uh, and the national media has too often uh, worked as a, 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 not only a willing but an eager accomplice, particularly to the left and, uh, and the Democratic Party itself. I mean, when you look at the Washington Post, the New York Times, ABC, CBS, NBC, uh, Evening News, I mean, these are effectively, uh, you know, House organs for the Democratic Party. Uh, and, and that's unfortunate because we need watchdogs on our fourth estate, uh, not lapdogs. And unfortunately, most of the national liberal media focus, uh, is, is actually focused on performing that role, role of lapdog and, help, and helper rather than watchdog. Well, that was my next issue. As the establishment media kind of circles the wagons with the uh, political class. We're seeing Jay Rockefeller. We're seeing 
uh, Lieberman were seeing all these statements, uh, Cass Sunstein, about restricting the free press, fairness right. doctrine, right. taxes on what they call conspiracy theories, things that they and, and uh, Cass Sunstein, of course, the regulations are listed not believing in man-made global warming. Uh, well, we see Ariana Huffington saying, how do we shut down Fox News? How do we shut down Glenn Beck? Uh, we see two weeks ago in Politico, I don't know if you saw it, the chilling memos from the head of Media Matters saying we are going to guerrilla infiltrate with spies and organizations. We're going to destroy uh, not just Fox News, but this list of conservative sites. And you go there, you're being demonized, I'm being demonized, Judge Napolitano. I mean, th these people aren't what even you'd call a liberal. I mean, they're more like Joe Stalin or something. I mean, I mean they really are authoritarian and scary. They uh, they are authoritarian in, in outlook and and I think in in value structure, which makes them extraordinarily dangerous. Um, not necessarily uh, to Fox News, but uh, to the to the country. Uh, when when media takes on a, a, a role that is uh, utterly destructive in intent and purpose, uh, and uh, and that is precisely what many of these advocacy organizations do, and they pretend to be. Uh, some sort of watchdog uh, organization, uh, but they, they they pretend to be performing that role when they are in fact uh, advocacy and activist organizations. But the great thing, Alex, is that the, that the American people are getting a very clear look at who, what, what they are, and what their designs are. Uh, that's healthy for the for the nation, and I'm delighted uh, to see that light shine very brightly on who they are and what they're up to. Well, I don't want to spend all our time on that group, but, I mean, they are 501c3, and I know mild libertarian groups uh, who have their 501c3 jerked for just getting involved, you know, in stating their opinion. How can they be a pure house organ of George Soros openly calling for the end of free speech in America and then be given 501c3? I mean, that, that, that is very discriminatory. Uh, it, it is, uh, it, it's at the very least curious, and the, the use of uh, 5013Cs uh, in our society is something I think that ought to be looked at, irrespective of the ideology or the uh, uh, the intent. Uh, we have become a nation of, uh, of uh, non-profits uh, that are starting to supplant in many ways to me, Alex, uh, traditionally the, the functions of government, uh, particularly at the local or county and state level. Uh, I, I, I worry less about the federal level, honestly, the national level. Uh, but we need we need to understand what the implications are for all of these nonprofits that have grown up over the years. And they've grown up, by the way, they number in the millions, uh, some of them with the very best of purposes. But uh, the fact is we are, we are diluting our system of government through those, through those nonprofits, NGOs, uh, and other entities that have uh, uh, been created. I'd much prefer people turn to government uh, for the services that should be Well, provided. isn't that an unfair playing field, too? I mean, the U.N. Absolutely. model is these NGOs. I mean, I mean, here's an example. I want your take on this. Thousands of waivers handed out to Fortune 500, but even smaller groups that have given campaign contributions to the Democrats and Obama. With its hundreds of thousands of employees, McDonald's gets a waiver on buying insurance for its employees. Sure. But I'm, if this stuff you know gets implemented, I've got to get insurance for all of my employees, and I will take part of their check to do it. So isn't that an unfair trade advantage that a hamburger place right next to McDonald's, a mom and pop, they've got to get insurance, but McDonald's doesn't? So if you go you know, pay money to the emperor, he then waves his wand and gives you an unfair trade advantage? I don't, I don't think there's any question about it whatsoever. It's, it, it is not only unfair, uh, but so transparently patronage that, it, it, that it's uh, nauseating. When you look at the principal beneficiary of uh, uh, these waivers, the United Auto, United Auto Workers Union, uh, the, what is the pr principal beneficiary of these waivers? Uh, you, you go beyond that, it's the supporters of this administration. Uh, who received the greatest amount of money, uh, which, by the way, wasn't even revealed publicly by the, the administration or the Democratic leadership and, and Obamacare, uh, the principal beneficiary of the early retirement support program, which uh, amounts to $5 billion, goes to the United Auto Workers here. So, I mean, it just goes on and on. Incredible. Uh, a lot of other questions in the limited time we've got left for you. 
Uh, what do you see coming up in this next election? We see the $40 billion cut. Ron Paul has come out and said that it was all basically stuff that had already been agreed to cut and what was left over from highway funds. He's even saying Ryan's uh, budget isn't going to fix things. If we don't stop the banker bailouts and deal with what the Federal Reserve's doing, monetizing the debt and devaluing the currency, uh, that all of this is window dressing. Lou Dobbs is a real financial expert, decades in the trenches. What's your view on what's happening with the budget? Well, I, I had the opportunity to talk with a congressman uh, two days ago, and, and we discussed exactly these issues, uh, Alex. And, uh, and, and and the congressman does question uh, whether or not any of this is, uh, is sufficient, given that there are larger issues in his views, and, of course, the principal among those, the Federal Reserve and the banking system, uh, and, and the reforms that are necessary, it's unquestionable that we need to reform our banking system, that we need to uh, take a very strong look and uh, and reorganize, in my judgment, the Federal Reserve. Uh, but that is a long, that is a long-term effort. It's going to take years to accomplish. What I am so pleased with is that Congressman Paul Ryan has come forward with the boldest, uh, most effective, in my opinion, budget plan to deal with deficits. Uh, not the national debt, but deficit uh, uh, in history. Uh, unfortunately, that's the kind of plan that is necessary because we've got, as you know, the, the greatest debt and the, and the most tremendous deficits in our history. But he has, with a, I think, an opening, uh, with an opening stake, uh, set the bar very high. And as we watch, the president couldn't come close to it with a with a rather uh, feeble uh, fiscal policy speech that he gave at George Washington University Wednesday. Well, Lou, as you know, uh, Kennedy in the one bracket cut taxes by 50% in 61, the other bracket 30-something percent, I forget the exact number, and tax receipts doubled. California's increased taxes and their tax receipts are going down. They're not stupid. Obviously, Obama and these collectivists want to wreck the economy so they can come in as the saviors and get more people to basically beach themselves you know, on their system by wrecking it. And now we have this chilling statement uh, by Geithner today at CNBC. It's also CNN Fox's reporting saying that if they don't basically increase the budget and raise the taxes, that Republicans will be to blame for the U.S. defaulting. Uh, right as 70 percent of the of, of the treasuries are now being monetized. I mean, this is an I mean, this scares me that they're now positioning the Tea Party, i.e. Republicans and others as being to blame for this. Um, this is amazing. I mean, this shows me they think the default could be close. Yeah, it, it, here's, here's what it shows me, Alex. One, it shows me that uh, our Treasury Secretary, Timothy Geithner, is somewhat limited uh, both in uh, his uh, outlook uh, toward the consequences of a decision that would be taken not to raise the debt there, one. Two, it, it suggests to me that he has a relatively either limited knowledge of banking itself or uh, the role of the federal government when it comes to, uh, to the Treasury Department. Uh, there is no, no default is uh, requisite or a logical uh, conclusion to not raising the debt ceiling. Let me be very clear about that. There are choices to be made by the administration should the Congress elect not to raise the debt ceiling. None of those decisions require default. And, I, and anyone... Anyone who says that it does is utterly and completely mistaken. And I would be delighted to have, uh, you know, uh, step forward and explain themselves because not a single person I respect with a knowledge of uh, finance, public or, or, or corporate finance, uh, would, will support that view. Well, yeah, is that it is not what's being spread by the media? Uh, uh, Mr. Dobbs, is it not a replay of what the pr central bankers did in October 2008 when they said, give us unlimited money or there'll be a depression? I mean, is this not a form of economic terrorism to threaten default, which well, itself will hurt the dollar uh, to get their way? Uh, Alex, I, I, I think that your point is, is a, a, a terrific one. I think any time a public official and a servant of the American people stands up in Washington, D.C. and says that Armageddon is the result of a public policy choice that is not the one they desire, I, every, everyone in the national media should be skeptical and point out uh, uh, that position and where it stands historically. That isn't what's happening with this national media. Our national media, the liberal media, tends to think it's responsible somehow to act as an instrument of the state. And that's unfortunate. 
Well, our time went quick. Let me say bye to you during this break, Lou. And I know you may have another interview coming up. And you have your own show coming up. Uh, or I'll see if I can hold you maybe five minutes in the next segment. If you can, I'll understand. I'll ask during the break because I want to get oh, in. Oh, man, we are here. Sorry. Oh, awesome, awesome. Okay, we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. On the other side, I've got a